Welcome to Songs for Your Consideration. In this series, we will use a song as a jumping off point in order to talk about an artist, genre, or a broader idea. Today's episode is all about wellness by Robocobra Quartet. It's 7 a.m. I wake after having had, on average, 7 hours and 41 minutes sleep. I have analyzed my sleep over the years and found this is the perfect amount for me. But you may be wondering, what exactly is a Robocobra Quartet? Here's how I made my fortune While you fill up your collection tin Robocobra Quartet are a band of six members. That's right, a quartet made up of six members. It sounds confusing, but it's actually very, very simple. So there's six musicians in the band, but only four of them will perform together on stage. Essentially, the six members are the full squad, but the quartet is the match day team. The quote that's most often used to describe their sound is Fugazi meets Mingus. So the band is fronted by the theatrical spoken word singer poet Chris Ryan, who is also their drummer. Then the rest of the band is made up by Nathan Rogers, Ryan Burroughs, Tom Tabori, Peter Hard, and Thibaut Barillon. Usually, when performing live, You'll have Chris Ryan singing and playing drums with a keyboardist, a bassist, and a sax player. However, on their records, they'll actually expand their palette to include the likes of piano and string arrangements. Thinking of similar modern artists, I'd say you're looking at bands like Black Midi, Black Country New Road, or in terms of the brass arrangements, Moon Hooch. So it's basically the modern mix of post-rock and jazz that I and many others absolutely can't get enough of. This song wellness that I want to focus on in a minute will be on their upcoming album Living Isn't Easy which will be coming out on the 17th of June 2022. Genuinely I think their second album Plays Hard to Get is one of my all-time favorite records. I can't recommend it enough and from hearing the singles for this new album plus some tunes from it live as well I think this third album could even be better. So let's talk about wellness. This is actually a fairly new song. It was only released last month, on the 20th of April, 2022. But there's been a few live versions floating around for a while, so I've been anticipating the release of it for some time. To quote the bio for this song, every lyric in wellness is taken from a newspaper article about the daily routine of influencers. Inspired by the fall song, Dr. Buck's Letter, it felt right to just read it out loud without changing a word. Nyler Nine reviewed this song and actually found the original Times article that the song's lyrics are quoted from. I'll leave a link below to both. So I thought to myself, how dare I critique the lyrics, the words from these wellness influencers, without walking a mile in their Crocs or Yeezy slides or whatever the hell they were. So I decided to dedicate a day of my life to following the influencer's daily routine that's outlined in the lyrics of this song. Oh, and just quickly before I get into talking about the lyrics, and showing you my influencer vlog, which I can't believe I said that. I've been talking about this tune and tweeting that I'd love to do a song analysis video about it. And the band were actually sweet enough to reach out to me and send me the stems. So instead of hearing my scratchy vocal cords, you can listen to Chris himself deliver his own lyrics. Thanks again for sending them. So uh, let's get into the lyrics, shall we? It's 7 a.m. I wake after having had, on average, 7 hours and 41 minutes sleep. I have analysed my sleep over the years and found this is the perfect amount for me. Okay, so it's now uh, 7.06 um, and this is my attempt to live like a a wellness influencer. Uh, Hence why we've got uh, Mahatma Gandhi as my background. I just felt like that was someone they would have as their background, you know, try to emulate Gandhi. So, um, I didn't successfully count how many hours I slept. Um, As a person, I'm more of a, uh, you know, pass out eventually approach to sleep. So I don't really, um, I don't really go to bed and then go to sleep. I sort of just uh, waste time and then I sort of wake up several hours later and uh, from that determine, oh, I'm tired. I probably didn't sleep very well. I would, so 
probably about 1am. So let's say 6 hours sleep. So I'm going to use 6 hours as my... Well, say 6 hours in 1 minute. So it feels precise. Because that's what a, an influencer would do. None of this 7 hours, 8 hours sleep. It's 6 hours in 1 minute sleep. So, um, cool. I often go to Hyde Park, take off my shoes and stare at the sun for 20 minutes. Being barefoot grounds me and I receive electrons from the earth. I sun stare because the UV rays aren't harmful to my eyes the first hour after sunrise and it resets my circadian rhythms. Just a quick comment, I'm just uh, finishing up the edit for this video. So you might be thinking one of two things here. One, this doesn't look like it was shot at 7am or probably more likely two, this is really embarrassing. Well, I actually shot this at midday and the reason is because this isn't actually the original footage that I took. This is a recreation because my SD card corrupted and I lost the footage. So I got up early on a Sunday, went to a park near me, stood in my bare feet while people were watching me thinking I was doing like the laziest solo outdoor yoga session they'd ever seen. So I had to go and refilm it during my lunch break, <laughs> which, you know, I had to look like a moron twice. So there you go. Uh, I put the work in for this shit. Uh, and obviously neither time did I actually stare at the sun because I'm not a total moron. Um, I intentionally stared just below the sun and like had my hat cover the view because I'm not going to stare at the sun for 20 minutes. Like I love that influencers are now just like disregarding rules that you're taught when you're like no age. They, they're taking everything off the table like Descartes did. You know, even that shit you learned when you were like three years old. Um, anyway, back to the video. Eight a.m. Take a shower using natural products. Chemicals found in shower gels can be harmful. Uh, so I'm about to jump in the shower. It's it's actually a little bit before eight a.m. for me. It's like ten to eight, um, and I've got some, some natural products here. Uh, so I went for for a, a banana and, and a pear. So uh, we'll see we'll see how we get on. I weigh myself and test my urine pH with the litmus test strip. Weight wise, you'll be glad to know I'm a healthy young buck. And uh, I couldn't find any litmus tests, but I did find this kit to measure your urine. And according to this, I am uh, not pregnant. 8.30, turn on my human charger, a device that shines light into my ear and gives me energy. Can I just say, that was maybe the least juiciest pear I have ever eaten. Like I swear it had a closer mouthfeel or uh, texture to like mashed potato it was so horrible um anyway uh, so it's now 8 35 so I've, i'm on the dot here and uh i'm now meant to plug in my human charger but i looked these up and they're basically just earphones with a light in them uh so i mean i wasn't going to start spending 30 quid on clearly quack shit so I mean I have a flashlight on my phone so I mean I'll just do maybe a few minutes on this side and a few minutes on the other side I mean I feel better already like make bulletproof coffee So, 
uh, made bulletproof coffee, or a version of it, uh, which from what I could gather was just coffee with butter and oil and shit in it, and it's horrendous, high calorie. Uh, so we just went for some. Well, we haven't tried it yet, so you can't say it's horrendous. This is true, but looking at it, I mean, I don't know how well this will point to the camera, but it's. I mean, what would you describe it as? It looks like when you uh, are making a cake and you haven't mixed the oil with the rest of the ingredients yet, and it's just sitting on the top. It smells a bit like that as well, with a little bit of coffee syrup. Coffee cake. Yeah, this was invented by some guy in Silicon Valley, so it was like a Tibet tea. Don't look like this is interesting, it's not that interesting. He just basically <laughs> heard they drink like high calorie thing and they claim it improves cognition and stuff. So we'll do some arithmetic after this. Uh, anyway, you ready? Uh, smell yeah. test first. Of all. It just smells like coconut oil to me. Yeah. <laughs> that is much better than I thought it'd be. Yeah. It's It's not coffee though. No, that's a good point. They said it's more like a latte, but it just, it just literally tastes like butter. Mm. Okay, I'm going to continue drinking this. I'm, I'm not going to bother filming it though, but yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> After I've had my coffee, I filled out a spreadsheet on my computer with how well I've slept and my urine pH. Nine a.m. When I arrive at the office, I fist bump every member of the team, fifteen in total. It is now nine o two, nine o three. Oh, I actually thought, what would I do if I said it's nine o'clock and then turned it? And it would have changed by the time it turned it. Um, that's not that exciting. Anyway, I meant to uh, fist bump everyone in the office. And I work from home. So, I mean, that's not that exciting. Um, I'm not getting a lot out of that, you know. So, I thought uh, I could do a PewDiePie. <laughs> and I don't mean what he did at the bridge. Uh, I thought we could do a bro fist, so... There we go. There, I've, now I've fist bumped all of you. Cool. I couldn't even commit to that. I don't know how it goes. Bro fist. Man. I almost want to wash my hand. Uh, but there we go. And I often take a nootropic drug called Anaracetam. It calms my brain and it gives me clearer thinking. Uh, so I wasn't actually totally sure what nootropics were. Uh, or if I'm even pronouncing that right. So I googled it. And they're basically just like smart drugs, you know, like caffeine tablets and sugar pills that you sort of people take before exams and things like that. Um, you know, very small, basically a cup of coffee is technically a flipping nootropic, I guess you could argue. Um, but anyway, I googled it and stuff and uh, I went down to Holland Barrett and got this uh, Clear Brain Mental Performance, um, which cost more than I would like it to have for this video, uh, but I'll read you what it has on the back. Um, brain performance. The brain is the largest and most important part of your nervous system. It contains billions of neurons and is home to thoughts and feelings. So like, they're experts. I take two tablets per day with a meal. Um, I'm I've literally just eating breakfast, so I should be sweet to, to take two of these. Uh, Oh shit. Uh, yeah, they're like little brown friends. Uh, down the hatch. I have dropped that. Quick, my brain. Oh, I'll just have to brush it up later. Ugh, oh man, he's only a bad start. See, if I'd taken these earlier, I wouldn't have dropped it because I would have had clearer thinking. Oh. I will report. Uh, how, I, how I feel later. Um, maybe I'll be able to edit this video in mere seconds. Who knows? I have a standing desk in my office and I often wear blue light blocking glasses to cut out junk light. I have a quartz crystal that I place next to me while I'm editing photos.
I work my Himalayan salt lamp. It helps to get rid of the harmful energy that's all around us from Wi-Fi and electricity. Goodness knows what it could be doing to my body. At some point between meetings, I try to have a shot of activated charcoal. They sell it at Pret now. Mm, we're so blessed in Britain. So, I um, looked into it. We actually don't have Pret in Northern Ireland. We don't have Pret in Monge. Um So, they're actually just announced that they're opening, like a few of them, like three weeks ago. But they haven't opened yet. They're opening loads of them in Belfast and stuff, but... Uh, I'm not gonna wait a month. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll order it. Maybe I'll do an update video. But anyway, uh, I went to Holland and Barrett again. Uh, I'd say that this video is sponsored by them, but I think if anything, I've only uh, crapped on uh, some of the products. So uh, all love. If you want to get into this stuff, go over it. I don't really take meds unless I need to. Um, I don't really go about and find caffeine pills and stuff. But anyway, I got these uh, activated charcoal. Uh, rapid release things. Supposedly it's basically to stop flatulence. Uh, I'll be honest, I assumed it was going to do something, you know, more magical. Or, you know, claim to do something more magical, like, oh, it, you know, enlightens your chakra. But, uh, no, it stops your farting. Um, so yeah, as I said, I don't have a shot of uh, activated charcoal, but I, I thought if I washed down these charcoal tablets with, like, a wellness drink, then it would... It would probably work. So, uh, let's see if I can do this. It also says to take three. Uh, screw that. Um, that seems like a lot. So I'll maybe take one, maybe two. I'll take two. Um, I don't really have problems with flashlights. <laughs> uh, okay. These look horrendous and they've stained my hand. Look at that. I've literally just lifted it out and they're like staining my fingers. Done that. Um, I was about to say this isn't that nice. I don't know what was going to be nice with charcoal. Um. Never have I chewed on a pencil and thought, God, this could do with some ginger lemongrass. That is the epitome of just okay. So the song has a BPM around 113. It's pretty upbeat and actually very funky. Uh, it's like a more abrasive, experimental Wolfpack song in some ways. The song structure is pretty loose. It doesn't have a typical verse, bridge, or any recognizable chorus section. And although there are repeated riffs and ideas, there's definitely an improvisational feel to the whole song. The easiest way to understand and digest it, I think, is to start with a bass. The bass is two main riffs that it goes between, giving the song a binary structure. Here's riff one. The bass line is fast picked and with the saxophone and keys on top, it kind of feels like it's going between the chords B flat major seven and C major seven. Although the improvisational aspects of the song mean that some sections may feel differently, despite having the same foundations underneath. Then here's riff two. This bass line is syncopated and reminiscent of funk music, especially with its chromatic movement. Generally, the keys back these riffs up by playing offbeat chords to accompany it. Although we also hear synthesizer and sampler used in order to give some sections of the music more of a crescendo and more momentum, much like how a riser works in electronic dance music. There's actually a lot of crossover between modern contemporary jazz and electronic music, as both have influenced each other over the years and inspired new sounds and approaches to the respective genres. For most of the song, the saxophone's harmonized, playing long held chords, which are often then pushed until the saxophone distorts. This technique is known as a saxophone growl. Although there are some more melodic sections, such as this really nice repetitive counter melody. As you could hear previously, 
The vocals have some subtle effects on them at times. The vocals are theatrical. You can definitely hear influence from the likes of David Byrne, King Cruel, or maybe even the B-52s. This definitely adds to the ridiculousness. The song is absolutely hysterical, and it's definitely enhanced by their total commitment to the joke. In a sense, wellness is completely self-aware, despite the material that inspired it being the polar opposite. It knows what it is. It's kind of a cosmic gumbo. I have pre-ordered the new album on vinyl, and it cost me less than the pills I had to buy for this video. Honestly, I can't say enough nice things about this band. It may seem like I'm bigging them up because they're from here, but it's the opposite. You should support your local music scene, but this band is just one of my favourites, period. The fact they're from here is just a bonus because it means I can go to see them live more often. By the way, in case anyone wants to know, I felt exactly the same after my short health binge. All I can report is that the uh, clear brain nootropics gave me a very mild head high for about an hour. Um, but it's far cheaper just to stand up too quickly if you want to get a similar effect. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see me do more stupid crap under the guise of diligent journalism, then hit the subscribe button. I've been BPM Stuff. You've been very considerate.